Tina Koto in a Matawaka. Tina Koto Iranga Ite Kopapa Otera. Noireira. Tina Koto. Tina Koto. Tina Tato Katoa. It is my pleasure to open this year's Gas Industry Forum, Te Ao Huri Huri, The Changing World and the Future of Gas. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but it's an honour to be part of this important industry event in any capacity. Thank you to Gas New Zealand for organising this event and to Janet Carson for inviting me to speak. I'd also like to acknowledge the board members of the LPG Association and the Gas Association for extending their mandate to include hydrogen and renewable gas fuel interests, reflecting the changing nature of gas in our country. This year's theme resonates well with my priorities and work programme already underway in the energy and resources portfolio. It also echoes industry's commitment to robust discussions to support New Zealand's transitions to a low emissions future. The past six months have been momentous for climate policy in New Zealand. The government has set New Zealand's emissions budgets for the first three budget period, released our first emissions reduction plan which lays out an ambitious package of measures to slash emissions and we've announced the first investments from the newly established Climate Emergency Response Fund. Aotearoa New Zealand's first emissions reduction plan outlines five key areas where we are driving change in the energy sector. We're using energy efficiently and managing demand for energy, ensuring the electricity system is ready to meet future needs, reducing our reliance on fossil fuels while supporting a switch to low emissions alternatives, reducing emissions in energy use in industry and setting a strategy and targets to guide us to 2050. We are witnessing the climate changing in real time and it's having material consequences on our homes and on our communities. Our coastlines are already experiencing rising sea levels, floods and slips are affecting our communities and essential infrastructure and freshwater sources are increasingly at risk. If we are going to meet our international obligations to stop global temperatures from rising more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels, we need to continue the transition towards a renewable energy sector in earnest. We will increasingly meet our needs through renewable energy through a combination of increased investment in geothermal, offshore and onshore wind, solar, hydrogen and other renewable gases and pumped hydro. To deliver this change, this government has significantly increased its investment in decarbonising industry, allocating $650 million from the Climate Emergency Response Fund over the next four years. We are also investing in the development of major strategies to achieve our vision for a net zero carbon economy in 2050, where energy is accessible and affordable, securable and reliable, and supports New Zealanders' well-being. This includes the development of an energy strategy, a new regulatory framework for offshore renewable energy, investigation of measures to help our electricity system and transition from where we are today to a highly renewable system and developing a gas transition plan. These actions are helping us to secure New Zealand's long-term future and ensure we seize the economic opportunities that come with a transition to a low emissions world. There will be opportunities for you to get in development of all of these pieces of work I just mentioned. The results of these work streams need to be an enduring and to work for New Zealanders. Engagement with groups and individuals will be critical to ensuring that this can occur. There is a clear role for industry in working together with government and communities to set us on a path to achieve our targets and leverage the opportunities that our renewable energy future represents. I was delighted to attend the opening of the Reparoa Biogas Facility last week. This facility demonstrates how we can have win-wins for supporting emissions reductions across different sectors of the economy. The facility will convert 75,000 tonnes of organic food waste into biogas, which is a big step in increasing the scale of New Zealand's biogas biomethane sector. It all shows other co-benefits through the production of fertiliser for our farmers to supporting carbon dioxide supply for our horticultural industry. It is great to see a growing number of businesses like EcoGas taking a lead in developing renewable gas options as an important step towards a renewable energy future for New Zealand and a zero carbon economy. I'd now like to spend some time outlining the intended approach of the development of the Aotearoa New Zealand Energy Strategy. 
It will be a highly collaborative process. Officials have completed early engagement with companies and organisations that represent a wide range of interests in the energy sector. This has helped to inform a draft terms of reference for the strategy. We'll continue this collaborative approach so that the strategy is enduring and therefore effective. The strategy needs to confront the trade-offs. How can we ensure accessible and affordable energy, maintain a secure and reliable supply, and reduce energy emissions at every stage in the transition to a low emissions economy? I hope you will all contribute to this debate. A significant input into the energy strategy of relevance to the gas industry is the gas transition plan that will set out the immediate steps on a long-term pathway to phasing out fossil gas in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We're aiming to complete the gas transition plan by the end of 2023 and the energy strategy by the end of 2024. We are working with the gas industry company to develop the gas transition plan, which will help to establish ambitious but realistic pathways for the transition away from fossil gas. It will outline steps to decarbonise and reduce reliance on gas while still providing for some gas use in 2035, where this makes sense. It will also investigate how we can provide security in the supply of fossil gas to our industrial users as we transition to net zero in 2050. And I'm keen to ensure the plan includes an estimate of transition costs for different transition pathways. The plan will establish a strategic view on the role of renewable gases in New Zealand and how uptake can be accelerated as we transition away from fossil fuels. I'm supportive of ongoing initiatives to develop renewable sources of gas, such as green hydrogen and biomethane in New Zealand. There are many examples internationally of renewable gases being used in existing fossil gas infrastructure. As a chemically identical substitute for fossil gas, biomethane presents opportunities in the short term for using our infrastructure for these gases. These can help offset the extra investments in the electricity grid that would be required if significant numbers of gas consumers transition to electricity. It also supports wider energy diversity and security of energy supply for consumers. One thing we need to explore is the extent to which all the existing infrastructures would be repurposed. I see the potential for hydrogen to be a key enabler to decarbonise areas of the economy that may be difficult to electrify, particularly in heavy transport and in industries such as steel and urea production. Hydrogen could even become an export commodity for New Zealand, particularly for countries in the Asia-Pacific region with limited access to their own renewable energy resources. To better understand and support future international hydrogen markets, the government has signed cooperation arrangements with Japan and with Singapore and will continue to look at opportunities to develop connections with other countries in this space. Through New Zealand's Catalyst Fund, we recently supported three collaborative research programmes on green hydrogen with Germany. Investment in hydrogen in New Zealand is continuing to grow. The government has supported projects with around $75 million in grant and low funding commitments through the Provincial Growth Fund, COVID-19 Response and, Re and the Eco Low Emissions Transport Fund and in research funding. There are operational pilot schemes at the ports of Auckland and Halcyon Power in Taupo and New Zealand Post recently added a hydrogen chuck to its fleet in partnership with Hyundai. A major hydrogen production investment is being investigated by Meridian and Contact Energy in Southland and the Balance Agri-Nutrients and Hiringa Energy Project is underway in Taranaki. Getting re regulatory clarity around new uses of hydrogen is crucial to scaling up a hydrogen industry. So my officials are reviewing the regulatory environment for hydrogen in New Zealand to ensure regulations and legislation are fit for purpose, that they do not create barriers to investment and that they align with standards being developed overseas. To bring together all of this work and to signal the government's objective and role in enabling a hydrogen future, we are developing a roadmap for hydrogen that will form part of the overall energy strategy. We plan to complete an interim roadmap by mid-2023 to set out these objectives, the role we think hydrogen will likely play in the energy transition, and what government needs to do to get there and when. As you have heard today, the government is committed to transitioning New Zealand 
to a renewable energy system and to building our renewable gas markets. I feel encouraged by the focus of this forum as it demonstrates the industry's commitment to our renewable future. I look forward to what we can achieve in this space by working together. I appreciate this opportunity to address you all and look forward to talking with you soon to capitalise on the opportunities on our transition to a more renewable energy system.